you go through your day to day, you live it out. The new day, you go to bed, you wake up for the next new day, you live it out. And you do all this whilst believing that you're not God. The greatest lie ever pulled over all of society, every single person, is that they are not God. And the Jews do it, the Christians do it, the Hindus do it. The Hindus, I'll come back to the Hindus in a second. The Buddhists, ah, eh, you know, every, everyone's at it. The Muslims as well, you know. Everyone's telling you, you're not God. And that you have to behave, you have to behave very well. Otherwise, you're going to be punished. And you're like, okay. And then you go, could they have organized society if they told everyone the truth? And maybe they don't even know the truth themselves. So it plays out as people believing they're not God. I have spent the last 24 years, seven days a week, pondering and searching my intuition, pondering the question of why does the universe exist? And I get moments <laughs> every half a decade or so where I go, right, hear me out, I've got it, this is it. And it, it kind of alters a little bit, it changes, it gets slightly clipped here, clipped there. It's like, but the main theory, the main theory I've stuck with is that every single person is God. And then you're like, oh, but we're all different. It's like, hold on a second. Now, before I move on to the next bit, let's talk about Hinduism. Hindus are a bit more tolerant of your uh, individual who just suddenly goes, right, I am God. They, they, they've, they've got that whole you're God thing down to a T that if a child is born with big deformities, they'll say, right, that's a God. Like, oh, you've got eight, eight legs, that's uh, Ganesh. That, or, oh, look, that's got elephantitis, that's Ganesh. Or look, it's Vishnu. Or They're into their gods. And uh, fair play to them. Getting closer. But um, I, I've had a look into an interpretation of uh, quantum me mechanics called relativistic quantum mechanics. And it's very similar to special relativity. Uh, you know, very quick, uh, quick rundown for you guys in uh, general relativity, special relativity. Uh, the um, speed of light and space time is all about the vantage point. So relative to where you are in the universe, you'll always experience the speed of light. Now, sorry, the speed of light at the same speed. And space time will have the exact same properties. What I mean by all this is like, if you're moving through space on a spaceship doing a quarter of the speed of light and you shine a torch forward, you're not gonna get 1.25 times the speed of light. The universe will start as soon as you switch on those photons and they'll move away at the speed of light. Turns out quantum mechanics and the very foundations of reality itself are also relativistic in that uh, things don't exist unless there's a viewpoint looking at them. Otherwise, it's just infinite quantum soup. It's just potentiality. There's no, there's nothing there. Oh, that song from Queen, nothing really matters. Well, let's upgrade that. Nothing is really anything, you know. And it's like a play on words. So like people say, oh, but life's a big deal. Death is a big deal. Suffering's a big deal. No, nothing is really a big deal. Nothing is really anything. And hidden in that sentence, you have the truth. Nothing is really anything. There's no difference here. You thought you were living in this material world with like physical processes going on. But no, the whole time you were actually living within your own mind. This is your own mind. When you're looking out there, when you're looking at the stars, you look at the trees, when there's kids playing football behind you, are they still there? Somewhere. You're looking into yourself. You think like the universe is, goes on for hundreds of billions of light years in every direction. You think that's, you think that just came out of an infinitesimally small point. No, that's inside your mind. And like all the scientists are like, right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna unsubscribe. But the scientists, you're just as guilty. Atheists, you're just as guilty. You guys believe in miracles, things outside of science. 
And it's not like things that, oh, we'll find out soon. It's agreed within science that the Big Bang happened. And scientists and atheists will say, yep, yeah, there was a... Uh, and they, they need to grasp the words that they use. And they will, they will be happy with the following, and then they don't quite grasp what it means. They will say, before the Big Bang, the entirety of existence, the universe, was an infinitesimally small point in space-time. That's broken space. Something's infinitely small. It's like sucking... Like Think of like um, if you drop a little rock on a pond and it'll... Bloop! Imagine something you drop that's so ploppy, that's so vastly dense that you drop it and it doesn't just fall to the bottom of the pond. It tears the universe a new anus and becomes an infinitesimally small point. So that infinite small point, scientists are like, yeah, 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 it's big, ba big bang, no problem. Infinitely small, as in not there, and then a trillionth of a nanosecond later, a hundred billion light years across with all the heat and everything. No, guys. I'll tell you what else can work, like the Big Bang, is I could be sat there with a kind of like moronic, dumb mind, as I usually have, I don't know. And then all of a sudden, a sparkling, amazing idea will come into my mind and boom, it will change my day. Maybe not my life. You don't have a thought that will change your life unless it's pretty good or pretty bad. But just like the Big Bang, I'll be there and all of a sudden the thought... <laughs> just like the Big Bang. It blows me away how people are also scared of using the word God. God has been... God's been uh, raped. God's been abused. God's been beaten. God's been humiliated. God's been subjected to all sorts of nonsense. And God, now, instead of God, you've got dog. All the hipsters around Manchester and London, in America, Canada, Australia, it's all people drinking flat whites, walking their pugs on their French bulldogs. Woohoo! So God has been replaced by dog, man's best friend. Yeah. Oh, hi. There's a great scene in True Detective where Rust Cole, played by Matthew McConaughey, he, um, I'll try and do it. Let's, let's, let's have a go. Let's paraphrase it. He's like, um, here, in our dimension, time is linear. Things move forward. But outside of space-time, from, say, a fourth-dimensional viewpoint, where the Eternals live. Like, we experience everything here as a sphere. You know, the world's a sphere, the sun's a sphere, the moon's a sphere, droplets are sphere, everything's linear. But to the Eternals, who are outside of space-time, they see the world as a flat circle. And there's one you can give to your flat Earth uh, people. Whether they're trolling or whether they actually believe it's a flat Earth, they try and bring you that whole, it's a flat plane flat plane, the world's flat. Then you say, well, yes, if you're traveling at the speed of light, if you were a photon or if you're an eternal looking at the earth, travel at the speed of light, everything that was round gets flattened, perfectly flat. Now, outside of space-time, looking at that flat circle, they would see, the eternals would see every single superposition, every single potentiality of where matter could have been, every single thought, all frozen like a giant wedding cake with all the little details, frozen, static, not moving. And that is incredible. And then he goes on, a very pessimistic guy, and he goes on and he says, death created time to grow the things that it would then kill. Now, to not give too many spoilers, Russ Cole's got every reason to be pessimistic. He does talk about his life and what happened, is what happened to his family. And if that happened to your family, you'd probably be, be just like Rust Cole. But if you're not, if you're still open to seeing things as they maybe are, let me give you another theory. Here we go. This is uh, the latest edict from the Vichikan city. 
or I'm a vigilante for the truth. You've got to be a bit flippant, you've got to be a bit light-hearted, especially when you're talking, when you're ranting at people, telling them that they're God, and you've done 10 minutes, and you're not even at your, your main point yet. You've got to keep it a little bit light-hearted. Hold on a second. Okay, everything's making sense. Right. Every single person is God, is the one God. There is nothing except God. There is nothing outside of God. There is no potential for anything to exist outside God. And the reason why everything is the way it is, what we're seeing is a frozen in time, but it's moving for us. But from a 4D outside of space time, it would be frozen. We're seeing the exact mind of God played out. This is the exact mind. Every um, There's more good than bad in the world. Have you noticed? There's, it's about 11 to 9, the ratio. 11 to, it's about 11 is good. 9 adds up to 20. Okay, don't worry about that. You've got 10 fingers, 10 toes, adds up to 20. And I'd say in the world, some people say it's like 66% good, 33% bad. But ooh, those people are in denial. There's a lot of evil out there. So... What you see with all people's behavior, all the babies being born, all the people dying, all the rapes, all the murders, but then all the good things, all the marriages, all the educations, all the happy children giggling and smiling and playing, innocence, true love, people falling in love, people making love, having those amazing orgasms. Whew! It's, there's a good world out there, but we don't need to talk too much about the bad. We've mentioned the, the, the main words, not have to go there. And... Your life, your life as a human being follows the primordial existence of the only one God. Except, here's the beautiful thing, here's what God has done for himself. I know God's eternal, so I don't know how we can describe this. Before temporality, before time, before the idea of time, God, God, there must have been an instant. And it's the holy instant, it's all a big now playing out big flat circle there must have been an instant where God was the primordial consciousness alone lost in blackness in the void with terrible nightmares there was no one else no one to help him and he was gonna die he was, he was no, no meaning no anything and out of nothing God literally created something good I'm with the Jews in the Old Testament there's that line in Genesis. God made the world. And then he saw that it was good. I'm with the Jews on that one. And the Christians as well. Obviously, Old Testament's a big part of it. But a baby crying for its mother is exactly what God was like in the primordial state before space-time. I know it's eternal for, but you know what I mean. There must have been some moment. Could have been two seconds ago. Maybe. But what God has done for himself in our universe, he's folded it over into itself. So now every single person that is born as God, because you're all God, every single person is God, not only has a mummy and a daddy, most people, unless you're unlucky, but we also are born in a universe where there is a will at large, to use the words of Arthur Schopenhauer or Bernardo Castro. Nice dog. I'm doing, I'm doing a YouTube. Could I get the dog in the background? Look at this. Here's a nice little thing. Look at this. We're, we're just talking about dog is God backwards. Look at this. God dog. Hello. God dog. Hey, that's my milk. Get off my Neo. milk. Come on, Neo. Thank you very much. Nice dog. What's his name? Neo. 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 Seriously? Yeah. The dog's called Neo. Follow the white dog. The white rabbit. That's amazing. So where was I? The baby's born with a mummy and daddy. It's born, it's cuddled, it's nurtured, it's breastfed, it's played with by its dad, it giggles. It's got double God. It's got itself before that loves it, that wants to nurture it. And every human being is directly connected internally through to the main God. I remember where I was, the will at large. Um, Arthur Schopenhauer. A uh, great philosopher, he picked up where Immanuel Kant left off and he was a transcendental idealist, so I'll say no more if you want to look into Arthur Schopenhauer, but he tended to avoid the word God as much, 
So does Bernardo Castrop, amazing contemporary modern philosopher. He uh, worked at CERN, the Large Hadron Collider. He has a PhD in computer science, computer engineering, I think. And uh, he became a philosopher. And as he was philosophizing, uh, great philosophy, but people would criticize him for not having a PhD in philosophy. So what did the young gun do? He went and got a PhD in philosophy. And he's also half Brazilian, half Dutch, half Danish, and I'm half Brazilian, half Scottish. And he's probably the philosopher I respect the most. So, quick tangent. But every act of war, every time someone is violent, every time someone is fearful, it mirrors the holy instant when God was alone in the infinite void. In the in and the very fact that God, out of gobbledygook, out of mathematical aberrations, out of paradoxes, managed to create a mind for itself, and then to come to the entire universe where now relativistic quantum mechanics is proving these 19th century, early 19th century German transcendental idealist ideas, Buddhism's getting a new bloody run in now, Christianity starting to be understood from a much more esoteric thing as in the story of Jesus is the story of you. You're the son of God, i.e. you're God. But they, they, they're trying to create society a little bit more humble, you know. And it works to an extent. But I believe now, the Vichican city edict, we're, we're, we're evolved enough now. Now that infrastructure is collapsing, people don't want to go back to work. People are furloughed. People are just sick of it, sick of the rat race. Because for what? We're living out the pain of ourselves during the infinite voided moment of our own coming into being as a as a as a mind as a mind now i'm going to explore this a lot i might even write some stuff i might even read it out here on youtube but what's the need for elegant philosophies i don't mean elegant like my ele but we generally need philosophy we need elegant theories we need things to, that we can attach meaning to and the pursuit of truth the search for the transcendental object at the end of time to honor Terence McKenna, the search for ourselves to honor every single religion, the search for the kingdom of God that's inside every single man, woman, and child, that's something special. And the reason we do it, let me just uh, settle in a bit here now. Let me just get, get a bit settled in, warm up a bit on this arm. The reason we do it, ladies and gentlemen, is to give thanks to God. We give thanks to the, the, the first one. He's like our direct ancestor way before your great, 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 great grandmother, grandfather. You have God, the, the first one. And he's real. I don't think there is a God. I know there is a God. It's taken 24 years. Some more doggos having a bark, but... Um, Come here, doggy. Come here, doggy. Don't fall into pessimism. Don't fall into nihilism. Remember, all of science, all of materialism, all of mathematics is literally the exploration of the inner mind of God. Science isn't a religion in itself. It's not even an ideology. It's a method for seeing how the representations inside your own mind, how those patterns work. That's what science is. No more, no less. Trust your own intuition. You are God. Be healthy. You are God. You know. They don't know. Those people on TV, they don't know. Because they're going to try and convince you otherwise. I'm going to try and keep this under 20 minutes. That's a good rant. It's a good rant, you are God. It's the you are God rant. And there's so much more to it, but I'm trying to give the kind of overview look. Give thanks, guys. Give thanks, ladies. It's amazing. It really is amazing.